Folks, good evening. We're about to get started. We waited over two years, so a few more minutes isn't going to bother any of us, is it? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, special guests and friends of Quail Ridge. It is a privilege for me to stand in front of you as we celebrate our 11th Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. For those who may not know me, my name is Dan Brosnahan, Director of Golf, and I'm honored to welcome you to what will be a most memorable evening. The Quail Ridge Sports Hall of Fame was established in 2006. Over the years, 21 deserving individuals have been enshrined and forever memorialized into the hallowed halls of this clubhouse. Tonight, three more inductees will achieve this great accomplishment, including our first ever female. <laughs> Categories to qualify for the Sports Hall of Fame are as follows. Significant competitive accomplishments among one's peers in amateur and or professional sports. Significant contributions to all type of sports at either the amateur or professional level. Significant contributions to Quail Ridge and its tradition in amateur and or professional sports as the bastion of spirited competition and good sportsmanship. At this time, I would like to recognize our Hall of Fame members who are with us this evening. Please stand when I call your name. Hall of Fame member, Dr. Bob Harris. Hall of Fame member, Mr. Ronnie Grove. Hall of Fame member, Mr. Charlie Bowie. Hall of Fame member, Mr. Tom Rex. Let's give all these gentlemen a round of applause. Thank you. Also joining us this evening are family representatives of the Hall of Fame members who have passed on. I would ask you to please stand. Mr. Bill Bogart, representing his father, Ralph Bogart. Mrs. Helena Carr, representing her husband, Bruce Carr. Mrs. Marion Kirkpatrick, representing her husband, Harold Kirkpatrick. And Mrs. Linda, Linda Randall, representing her husband, Ross Randall. Thank you so much for being here this evening. In addition, please allow me to introduce two special friends of Quail Ridge who have been instrumental in preserving our history. One is our journalist, Mr. Craig Dolch, who's not with us this evening. And the second individual is our artist, Mrs. Lisa Wood. Lisa is instrumental and responsible for all the portraits in the entire Hall of Fame room and organizing our honor gallery, which we'll see later this evening. Lastly, I would like to pay tribute to Mr. Charlie Price. Charlie Price served on the Hall of Fame committee since its inception, and he was very instrumental in all the facets of our success. Although Charlie is no longer with us, his spirit lives on and his contributions will never be forgotten. In this room is Mrs. Charlie Price. Mrs. Price, your husband is here with us spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I will now turn the program over to Hall of Fame Committee Chairman, Mr. Steve Smith. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. It's so great to see uh, so many of you here tonight for a very special evening, and it's so great to see all of these uh, Hall of Fame members here, too. So we're very pleased that you're here. And uh, welcome you to uh, <clears throat> those who have come to honor our three exceptional members of, of the Quail Ridge family for their accomplishments in the world of God. 
The event this evening, as Dan mentioned, is long overdue. We've been attempting to uh, recognize these individuals for over two years now, and finally, finally, the night is here. So, uh, welcome, and I think we have a very special evening in store for you. We have several special guests joining us in the celebration this evening. Some will join us in person, and others will be uh, join us uh, via video with special uh, special uh, messages uh, to and about our honorees. So I invite you to uh, sit back and relax, relax, and uh, let's take a trip down memory lane. Our first inductee this evening is Dick Horn. Dick has been a member of Quail Ridge for 25 years. You can read all about Dick's accomplishments in your program, beginning with his service as captain of the Citadel golf team, and capped off by his induction into the South Carolina uh, Golf Hall of Fame, the Citadel Athletic Hall of Fame, and now the Quail Ridge Sports Hall of Fame. To tell you more about Dick and his exceptional amateur golf career, it is my pleasure to introduce our first special guest of this evening, Jay Siegel. Jay has one of the most distinguished, of course you know, Jay, Jay has one of the most distinguished amateur golf records in history. Then at age 50, he turned professional and had a very su successful career on the PGA Senior Tour. Jay's also a neighbor at nearby Delray Dunes, serves as an honorary ambassador for Quail Ridge, and is a great friend to many Quail Ridge members. Jay, microphone. You know, uh, when you think about a Hall of Fame at various clubs, there aren't very many of them, and there's not a one like this. I congratulate the club, what they're doing, and keep it up. It's terrific. Amateur golf needs that. I've been in this audience a number of times, uh, seeing my friends be inducted, and uh, my sincere wish was to, when Dick was selected, that he would select me to introduce him. <laughs> As you'll hear, I wasn't always so sure that that was going to happen. But sure enough, it has, and uh, it, it's a real honor for me. Um, you've got so many great honorees Bill Ely, Harold, Kirkpatrick, Ralph, I see Bill here, but um, it's just great, it's just great, I'm so delighted. We go back together 50 years plus, and we've had so many laughs, we're still laughing, and, and uh, to tell you some of those stories, uh, Dick's and I think folks know it, he's been a giver of himself. You know, he established the Rice Planters Amateur in South Carolina. And I played in it one year, a couple years actually, and it was, it's, it's one of the top amateur events. That's not an easy task to pull off. We know about his Citadel, and I think of equal importance is he and Troy Wheat from the Dunes started the road cup. Now let me tell you something. That's the highlight of my year. <laughs> to try to be competitive with these young guys over here. And, and um, it's not that easy. But we have fun, it's good sportsmanship. I, I can remember one year when it was so cold, we were at the Dunes, raining, terrible, and I said, come up calling it off for the day, and I said, no, wait a minute, we have carts with covers. Quail doesn't have any covers on their carts. Let's play. <laughs> a few other highlights in, in his career, he was ranked ninth in Golf Digest Senior Amateurs. The highlight of his golfing career, Dick says, is the South Carolina Open where he beat all the pros. Four-time club champion here, Beat me a number of times. <laughs> Nobody talks about his sales expertise in the insurance business. I knew about it. And uh, 
he was a tiger, just the way he competes on the golf course. So he was also a great, great golf partner. My best story for us is when, uh, actually, I, that's my next one. But, uh, <laughs> my best story is, is when, about Dick, is when he was competing in the Society of Seniors in South Carolina somewhere, and, and uh, it was told to me by Cobby Ware, many of you know Cobby, and I believe, I believe the story's partly true. <laughs> Dick had his first chance to win the Society of Seniors event. He was three or four shots ahead with just a few holes to go. A new course took all of them. They tee off, force them down the fair. Somebody yells over from the other hole, you're on the wrong hole. <laughs> so they had to go pick up their balls in the cart. They were all discombobulated. Went to the right tee, teed off. Well, some of them had, they all had Callaways back then, as you all know. They all had hit the wrong drivers. I finally found the, the right hole and the right clubs. I don't know how that ended up, Dick, but I'm sure you'll straighten it out. <laughs> and in, near and dear to my heart was when I got to stay with Dick in a suite in Chicago during the U.S. Amateur, I was very, very tired, and Dick entertained me all week. I think the highlight, he was yelling and complaining about the hair in the sink, and I realized it wasn't his, so <laughs> I, I, I had to try to, try to be nice. So what he did for for the field is he beat Bobby Lewis, the Walker Cupper back then. That's no, that's no easy feat. And uh, Dick, I remember the, those slacks you had. I hope you still don't have them. <laughs> but that was, that was something else. And Dick was the first person that I called after I won the event. Uh, he's been very special. I could go on and on about it, but you know, um, to have him as an honoree, just as an a great honoree, is just another indication of how well Quell does this. Thank you. Dick, please. can get even with him pretty quick, but I'm speaking out the heat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for coming tonight. This is a special occasion to receive this award. It means a lot to me. Another occasion more special, however, was October 14th of 2007. It was a Sunday and I was baptized and I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. May I introduce my family members first who came some distance to be here. My son Richard Jr., his wife Carrie and three daughters could not be here, but uh, Richard came down. It's just great to have him here. Uh, he has his law degree and undergraduate degree in Wake Forest, and he's a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And my daughter Sandra and her husband Hank Chivis, all living in Mount Pleasant, have their three sons, my grandsons, all Hill, Middleton, Charles, and Langdon. And my youngest daughter, Catherine, lives in Seattle, couldn't be here. And of course, my wife, Ann, uh, passed away a little over nine years ago. She would certainly be here tonight. And let me ask my family to please stand up. Good friend Ray Finch, who lives in uh, Palm Beach Gardens, is here tonight. 
Brady had, has been a dear friend for years. His dad, Raymond, was a was really my mentor uh, to the point that he suggested I join Crail Ridge in the 1990s, and certainly I'm still here. And Lee Holman, an engineer professional, an avid golfer, is here tonight, and I have to tell you, he's my Sunday school teacher too. <laughs> Now I have to thank Jay Sutter, my good buddy, dear friend. Jay and I met and played golf together in 1970 at a John Hancock National Convention. He is the best amateur since Bobby Jones. He won two U.S. amateurs, three U.S. mid-amateurs, a British amateur, played, uh, played nine times on the Walker Cup, played in 11 Masters. He made the cut six times and was one amateur three times. And he won many more events amateur-wise, until he turned pro at age 50. Then he won nine senior PGA events. How about that, Jack? <laughs> and also, when Jay and I socialize, he beats me again, not only in golf, but he can out drink me too. <laughs> and I must recognize two more people. Jim Seacrest, my best friend at Quail Ridge. Such an inspiration and motivator for me. He actually picked out the church I still attend. He's combating some health issues right now. And I asked if we pray for him, he'll be heading home this weekend. Then there's my first time dear friend, <clears throat> the late Harold Perpatch, who many remember. I dedicate my induction to Harold Kirkpatrick tonight. He was my cheerleader. <clears throat> he never hung up the phone before saying I love you. May I recognize, uh, recognize Patricia Brennan, my dear lady friend who now lives in Delray Beach. She cooks the best home cooked meals anywhere. <laughs> she's a wonderful companion. She has type 1 diabetes since she's 11 years old. She never complains. She says her diabetes is a mere inconvenience, and her positive attitude is what's kept her so strong today. Before I sit down, let me briefly address two subjects. The game of golf, the best game in all of sports, and recognize a lot of you who I would not know if it were not for golf. Just look around tonight and just notice how many friends that you have because of golf. We enjoy each other because of golf. Again, it's the greatest game in all of sports. And yes, there's the Golf Road Cup that was mentioned earlier. 22 years ago, uh, Troy Wheat, a Delray Dunes member, is he here tonight? Well, I missed him not being here. And Laurie Hammer, who was director of golf uh, at Delray Dunes, Charlie Bowie, who was our director here, put our, uh, we uh, put our heads together and wanted to have an inner club competition following the Ryder Cup format. And who would believe 22 years later it's become an annual tradition? And the ladies have their golf road cup as well. And I hope the road cup continues indefinitely. And because of golf, here at Quail Ridge, either directly or indirectly, I've met and become friends with the likes of Tom Adams, Sam Livingston, Henry Kerfoot, Tom Cooks, Pete Smith, Norm Toll, Warren Caffey Vodak, Harry Kane, Woody Green, Ronnie Grove, Bill Bogart, Paul Everett, Arnold Edwards, Turner Davies, Paul Hockman, Brian O'Connor, John Harrigan, Kevin Hammer, Ernie Jones, Lloyd Higgins, Ned Pugh, Steve Smith, Jeff Davis, Tom Rex, Bob Stevenson, and his brother Bill, who's a new member and my neighbor. And then my, uh, um, yeah, and then I'm, <clears throat> I have a next door neighbor named uh, uh, Brian McDonald, with his uh, uh, significant other. Um, Super. Thank you all for coming. And I, and I can't name 
clean people. Tom and Yvonne McLean, King Shackleford, Jerry Spiegel, Chris Perrin, Bill Wolverson, Fred Anton, Hank Berry, Dennis Sullivan, Jerry Crow, Jeff and Julie Oswald, Bob and Gail Murphy, I don't know if they're here tonight, uh, Dennis Walter, Jim DeBow, John Sheehan, Mary Secrets, uh, the Paul and Jan Secrets, Fran Jamin, uh, Ed Fisher, and so many more not mentioned. Please let me recognize our director of golf, Dan Brosnahan. Wow, what a good job he's doing. Thank you for mutual assistance, Matt and Cody. Matt Corey and Cody Sinkler. And head starter and organizer, Rob Murphy. How about Rob? I think? <laughs> Recognize Brian Merbler, Director of Marketing. And there's some Foyle Ridge Country Club staff that get little recognition. Director of this clubhouse. Carl Harsh, the best dressed man I know. <laughs> and his assistant, Rochelle Fugiero. And their two clubhouse assistants, Alex and Fritz Kuboy. And, <laughs> and very long time food and beverage servant attendant, Al, Al Calderon. <laughs> and very important to recognize head chef. Risa, I can't say that, he'll be up. Uh, he can really cook some good food for you. And remembering Eric Price, Director of Security and Safety. What a good job he's doing. And not forgetting Fred Condon, Director of, my, of the uh, Men's Locker Room, our shoe man. And then what about Mark Rizzo and Nick Peterson, our valet team. Last but not least, the general manager and chief operating officer of this club, Bill Langley. Yeah. Bill's doing a great job in running the overall operation of our club. Uh, the food and beverage division added to the club's increase in membership revenue has really been significant. And the golf operation continues to get better, better and better as time goes on. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill Langley. <coughs> Two names I forgot was Whit, A.T., and Mark Mundy. <laughs> and then the Canadian members. They added a new healthy dimension to Quail Ridge a few years back. The likes of Randy Aziz, Mario Fogé, Bob Lanier, the Clouté Boys, Pierre Bohemia, the late Jerry Demaray, Claude Dubois, Dolly LeBlanc, what a smile. And then my best inspiration of all is Claude Champagne. Very good. A personal tribute to golf, especially amateur golf. We play golf for the love of the game, not for our livelihood. Golf is the big reason for having so many friends, old friends, new friends, and for friends we get to meet. The best game in all sports. And golf is bigger than any one person, except the almighty God. Golf is the best game of all sports. Let's keep playing the game as long as we can. Amen? And last, almost last, <laughs> let me remember our late friend, Pam Bob in the hand, and also congratulate Bob Farrell for receiving this award tonight. And thanks to the Hall of Fame committee for including me. Too long, but I'm going to finish this uh, with a message titled, What Kind of Old Man Are You Going to Meet? Dear friend, you're going to meet an old man someday down the road, 10, 20, 30 years from now. You're going to catch up with him, waiting for you there. What kind of old man are you going to meet? He may be a seasoned, gracious fellow surrounded by a host of friends who call him blessed because of what his life has meant to them. Or may he may be a bitter, delusion, dry up, old, cynical buzzard with, with a good word for anybody, without a good word for anybody, friendless and alone. 
This kind of old man meets and depends entirely on you because that old man will be you. You'll be exactly what you make of him. Nothing more, nothing less. It's up to you, is it not? You'll have no one else to credit or blame. If you live now only for what you get out of life, then the old man becomes smaller, drier, and crabby, and more self-centered. Open your lives to others. Think in terms of what you can give. The old man grows softer, kinder, greater, and more Christ-centered. The fact is hidden things in life, attitudes, goals, ambitions, desires, may seem unimportant now, but they're adding up on the inside. Are they not? Well, you can't see them crystallizing in your hearts and minds, but they will show up sooner or later. It's time to pay that old man a visit and care for him before it's too late. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. We have one more, one more uh, thing for you here, Dick. second inductee this evening, Pam McCloskey Brosnahan. For about 20 years, from 1994 to 2014, Pam was a beloved member of the professional staff here at Quail Ridge, rising to the position of co-head golf professional alongside her husband, Dan, both ser serving under longtime director of golf, Charlie Bowie. I will now ask Charlie, uh, a Hall of Fame member himself, to come up and say a few words as we celebrate Pam's induction into the Quail Ridge Sports Hall of Fame. Charlie? Thank you, Steve. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here tonight to help induct Pam McCloskey Brosnahan. When I hired Pam to be my assistant professional back in 1994, I had the feeling it would be one of the best hires I ever made. I just had such a great feeling about Pam, the person. However, she also came to us as such an incredible professional. Yes, she was the whole package for sure. Well, that played out to be more than true for the Quail Ridge and for me. So much of Pam came from her parents, Karen and Mark. Pam grew up on a farm, their farm in Illinois, but she loved sports. She loved softball, she loved volleyball. Right then and there, her parents knew that she was, she had this competitive spirit in her heart right then and there. But going to Florida on vacation, with their parents at about age 10, she would win all the putting contests at the hotel they stayed against all the adults. She's about 10. And right then and there, Karen and Mark knew they had some kind of a player. She didn't know anything about golf, but she was a good putter. And she beat them all right then and there. Well, that obviously started it all. Pam began spending countless hours at the driving range and that propelled her to playing junior golf and winning quite a few tournaments. She played on the boys' golf team and beat almost all of them. While still in high school, she played on the volleyball team. And while still loving and playing volleyball in high school as a senior, she had to make a decision between playing volleyball, she had you know, some potential maybe volleyball scholarship, or playing golf. Well, her dad told her, Pam, you better stick to golf, because you can play that for a lifetime. And Mark, thank you. That was a great decision. Because we're the recipients of that decision right there. Thank you so much. Pam was a walk-on as a freshman at the University of Illinois, but quickly earned a scholarship 
for the next three years and became captain of her team junior and senior year. Pam worked hard at her golf game after graduation uh, from the University of Illinois, and she really wanted to move to Florida where she could really hone in her golf, her golf skills. And she took countless lessons from famed instructors, Peter Costas and Bob Toski. Well, that all paid off in the long run because as an amateur, she won the Palm Beach County Women's Amateur, and she won the Florida State Women's Amateur. And Taffy Brower, she's here tonight, she could tell you about that. I don't know if Taffy's here tonight. And Pam soon turned her talents to become a professional. And what didn't take her long to become a member of the PGA and the LPGA. Pretty uncommon, but pretty outstanding if you knew Pam. That's where she was going. She was one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. Driven to succeed and driven to elevate the game of golf mostly for the juniors and women. That seemed to be her real niche. She, she loved it. But you know why I was so fortunate to hire Pam to be a professional and a leader on our golf staff? All of Pam's wonderful qualities came to surface as she helped us elevate the golf operation here at Quail Ridge to become one of the best in South Florida. Pam was dedicated to the max to Quail Ridge, its members and her staff here. She particularly strived to elevate our women's golf program here at Quail Ridge. She would come to me and say, Charlie, we gotta have a ladies golf road cup team. Charlie, we gotta have a top 10 shootout. Well, I was smart enough to say yes. So okay, Pam, let's go for it. And she spent countless hours teaching and coaching her golf road cup teams. And they were pretty strong. They were very good, and part in part because of her desire, and that her teams could see how much she loved the game of golf. Seeing Pam strive for excellence here at Quail Ridge made me a better professional, a better person because of it. Pam was most determined to see that all of our events here were professionally run in the most organized fashion. And there was nobody more organized. Well, maybe Dan. He might be equally organized. But he learned from Pam, see, so. <laughs> I know we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Pam and the way things are run today. Her spirit lives on that staff. So Ellen knew Pam loved to compete whether it was competing for the Women's Florida State Amateur or playing against her husband, Dan, in the Quail Ridge Golf Staff Championship. Dan, who won the match, should I say? <laughs> it's I think it was Pam. <laughs> whether it was on the planting green for a glass of wine, she loves her wine, uh, or rooting for her beloved Chicago Bears or St. Louis Cardinals. You best not cross her on those two points. She would be ready for an argument. So she put it all out there. That's the way I see it. And she did it that in life, and she did it in her job here at Quail Ridge. We soon found that Pam was diagnosed can cancer. It soon spread to her liver. And I remember a few days, last few days here at Quail Ridge, she insisted on being here for the Tri-County Golf Tournament. I said, Pam, why don't you go home? Come on, go home and relax. No, I gotta be here. I know a lot of those ladies. I play golf against them I competitive, competitively. And they're my friends. I wanna stay here and I wanna see them. So tragically, at the age of 52, cancer took her life. However, we at Quail Ridge will always be the recipients of her hard work, her high level of competence, all the while supporting an incredible smile Right there. Pam, you're not with us today, but your legacy lives on here at Quail Ridge in the golfing world and, as maybe many of you know, uh, the South Florida PGA has named a women's, the Women's Section Championship after her. South Florida PGA has named the Junior Championship in her honor. 
And the Western Golf Association, Everton Scholar Foundation, gives out a scholarship every four years to a deserving female caddy in her honor at the University of Illinois. Pretty impressive. Because Pam always worked towards equality in women's golf, I know she would be most proud today to say that she was the first female inducted in the Quail Ridge Sports Hall. mentioned, uh, Pam was uh, captain of her college golf team at the University of Illinois. So now we have a treat for you, if you'll turn your attention to the screen here, uh, the head golf coach at the University of Illinois, Mike Small, has sent us a video message. Good evening, members of Quail Ridge, family and friends of Pam Rosman. I'm Mike Small, the head men's golf coach at the University of Illinois, and I'm honored to be Join with you in welcoming Pam into the Quail Ridge Sports Hall of Fame. You're getting a good one. I've known Pam since the mid 1980s. We were both represented the online men's and women's golf teams, and I could tell at that point in time that Pam was going to be very successful whatever she wanted to do. The way she uh, played the game, her passion for the game of golf, and her leadership skills, I knew it was going to bode well for her and her future. After college, our paths diverged. So we kept in touch, and I followed Pam's career with the PGA of America. And when our team started frequenting Quail Ridge Country Club, uh, my parents became members, so we brought our team down, and, and Pam and Dan and Charlie always made our, our team feel comfortable and always welcome at the club. But I could tell by watching her teach while we were there and watching her interact with the members that she hadn't changed, that her magnetism, her leadership skills, and her ability to teach and talk the game was still as strong as ever, and I know Quail Ridge benefited greatly from Pam and her expertise. The passion she showed not only for the PGA of America, for the game of golf, for her family, but for Quail Ridge showed the professionalism and the dedication she had to her job. It's just, it's just tough to think that she's not with us, and I know she has a great, uh, she a great memory of Pam. I know I do, I always will. I think it's a wonderful honor that the members of Quail Ridge are bestowing on her tonight with her, with her induction into the Sports Hall of Fame. Very well deserved. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Well, thanks to Mike Small for that special message. All of us here at Quail Ridge certainly miss Pam. She was a very special friend, teacher, and mentor to many of our members. And she will be remembered for many, many years. Uh, I would now like to uh, ask uh, Mark and Karen McCloskey, Pam's parents, to come to the podium and uh, say a few words. <coughs> welcome, welcome back to the podium. She would be so honored to have her work recognized in this way. We thank all of you so much for being here to share with us this occasion. We, came, we especially want to thank Pam's two longtime friends who are with us today, Stacia and Elizabeth and their husband. Stacia and Pam were in nursery school together, and they've been friends ever since, even to the very end. Also want to thank Taffy. I haven't seen her, but I hope she's here. She and Pam had great matches. 
I'd also like to thank the Ladies Golf Association for naming the, the President's Cup uh, in Pam's name. That's very special. She would really like that. She'd be honored and pleased with that recognition also. I got one last thank you. And that's to thank Charlie. Thank you for hiring her. She, she loved you, Charlie. She loved Quail Ridge. inductee this evening is Bob Ferrer. Uh, we're going to change things around a little bit uh, here. Uh, um, for this inductee, we're going to uh, have a video here in just one moment. Let me say a few words about Bob. Bob's been a member at Quail Ridge for uh, 20 years, and like our two other inductees this evening, he was elected captain of his golf team at Notre Dame, where his team earned three NCAA golf championships. You can read all about that and, uh, and the rest of Bob's amateur golf career in your, in your program. Um, so we do have a special uh, guest uh, joining us uh, via video. It's my pleasure to introduce a message from Coach Mac Brown, former head football coach for the universities of North Carolina and Texas, and a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm Mac Brown, head football coach at the University of North Carolina. Wish I could be there in person tonight to congratulate Bob Farrell on going into the Quail Ridge Hall of Fame. What a great person, what a great golfer, an American hero for all he, he did for us in, in, the, uh, in the war and in our military, um, but just a, a genuine person. So congratulations, Bob. Uh, nobody's more deserving than you. Sally and I wish we could be there in person, but we're there in spirit. Uh, enjoy, my friend. You're very deserving. Thanks to Mike Brown for that, uh, that tribute to, uh, to Bob. Um, to help us uh, celebrate Bob's induction into the Hall of Fame tonight, uh, we have his son, John, here uh, to say a few words. Unfortunately, his other son, Bobby, was supposed to be with us, but uh, his plane got canceled, and so he's unable to get it. I know he's uh, disappointed with that. So, JJ, will you please uh, join me up here and share a few thoughts about your work? Uh, my name is JJ Farrell. I'm Bobby Marion's third and favorite child. <laughs> I'm grateful to be here tonight and have this opportunity to tell Bob, all of you, how proud we are of his amazing life on and off the golf course. In my eyes, and I speak for his entire family, he has always been a Hall of Fame father, husband, and grandfather. Golf has always been a major part of his life. The road tonight started many, many, many years ago. <laughs> as a young boy growing up in Appleton, Wisconsin, where the golf season is only about 10 days long, <laughs> which makes the achievements of tonight that much more impressive. All the important life lessons he learned on the golf course, the close friendships he's made along the way, have shaped the man he is today. I'd like to share some golf stories that you might not be aware of. Our young Bob was a multiple junior golf champion. The win that stands out the most in his junior career was when Bob and his opponent were going to the last hole, par three of a championship match, all tied up. His competitor had the honors and stepped his shot three feet from the pin, which would appear to be a kick in birdie. Bob knew he had to make a shot of a lifetime just to keep the match going. He stepped up to the tee with no fear and ice in his veins. Not only did he get inside his competitor's ball, 
He knocked the league for an ace. And went <laughs> After graduating from Notre Dame, Bob joined the Air Force. He did his flight training in Las Vegas. There was a country club there where a few select servicemen could play. One morning before his round, he noticed another Hall of Famer and Super Bowl champion, Coach Vince Lombardi, who just happened to be in Las Vegas for a few days. Our young, confident fighter pilot walked over to the legend and introduced himself as a huge fan and a Packers season ticket holder. He asked Coach Lombardi if he wanted to join his threesome. To his surprise, the coach accepted. They played golf that day, and for the next two days, Bob picked up Coach Lombardi at his hotel. They would play golf together, stop at a bar, eat dinner, drink beer, and, play, and talk Packers football after each round. A bucket list item for anybody, but especially a kid from Wisconsin. That would not be his last interaction with great coaches. As you can see, Matt Brown now on the screen. After Bob got out of the Air Force, he took a job as a pilot with National Airlines, and they relocated us to Miami, Florida. He quickly joined the local country club and started showing off his golf skills and making friends. During one of the club tournaments, Bob was paired with another newcomer to Miami and future Hall of Famer, Don Shula. Coach Shula had just moved Miami to become the head coach of the Dolphins. Not sure how they did the tournament, but that weekend was the start of a very close 50-year friendship with Coach Shula and his entire family. The game of golf has opened up many doors for Bob throughout his life. He has had the privilege of not only playing golf with, but becoming close friends with many other Hall of Famers. Matt Brown, Tom Cousins, Bob Greasy, and Jack Nicklaus, to name a few. But there is much, much more to this man to admire. <clears throat> First and foremost, he's a devoted husband to our beautiful mother. They have been together for 65 years. She should be inducted in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> he would not be nominated tonight without her support and lifelong commitment to her family. Mary is the foundation on which our family is built. I am sure my dad would agree she deserves her own speech. Dad definitely outkicked his coverage with you. <laughs> Bob is a decorated war hero. He was an F-105 fighter pilot in Vietnam with over 100 successful missions. He was awarded the Silver Star and several other me medals of bravery. How cool is that? He had a distinguished 30 year plus career as an airline pilot which afforded him the ability to play golf often and all over the world. He is a devout Catholic. Wherever he is on a Sunday, I can assure you he will be at Mass. He's extremely humble, a man of real integrity. Not only is he handsome, funny, and smart, which seems to run in the family, <laughs> he's, he's, he's generous and kind to all he meets. To us, he's a living definition of an officer and a gentleman, and what some might even call the total package. And now, he's a quail rich all of us. So with that, all I have to say is, well played, sir. <laughs> say a few words. Oh, 
thanks to several people. <coughs> the first being my dad. He got me involved in golf when we moved from Illinois, where I was on a swim team, to Wisconsin and his 10 day summers, where there was no swim team. So I put, he joined the golf club and started playing golf. My first big accomplishment in golf was to finally beat my dad. And that took me four or five years to do that because he would put a lip on me and I would choke like a dog. <laughs> but finally I got it done. Uh, before I left Wisconsin, I was able to shoot a course record 63 at the club we belonged at, and that was 60 years ago, it still stands. <laughs> There's one more person I need to give a brief thank you to is Dick Horn, my fellow inductee. But the first time I met Dick Horn, we were paired together in the Carolina Seniors in 1997. And I didn't know anybody playing in the tournament, but we were paired together. And then after the second day, he was graceful enough to invite me to have dinner with him. So we were sitting talking about golf and my entree into senior golf. And he started talking about who he thought was going to win the tournament. Now at the time, I happened to be leading the tournament. <laughs> with about a three-stroke lead. <laughs> and there were several good players in that event. Cliff Cunningham, who won the U.S. Senior Amateur later that season. Uh, Haywood Sullivan, who had been the runner-up the year before. And anyway, I was paired with Haywood, and Dick said to me, you know, I think Haywood is probably the guy to, to attend <laughs> So I want to thank him for giving me the incentive, because I went out the next day and won the tournament by five shots. <laughs> children, without their support, it wouldn't have happened. My son Bobby couldn't make it. You just met JJ. My two girls are here. And two of our, our two oldest grandsons are here. So it's a wonderful event. Golf has been very good to me. Took me to Notre Dame. It didn't take me in the Air Force, but it allowed me to play. I looked the other day, I played in five continents and 15 different countries. Some of the more unusual places I've been are New Guinea. Played in a golf tournament in Ley, New Guinea. Nobody's ever heard of it. <laughs> the people were there were still the coast watchers from the Brits and Australians during the Second World War. We I happened to play golf with my two sons in Kenya. That was an interesting experience after watching the animals to find a wonderful golf course. Yeah. I've been able to play tournaments on some of the finest countries in the country clubs in the country, Wingfoot, Oak Hill, Cypress, Portrush, Brandon Dunes, Pinehurst, can't get any better than that. And as my son has mentioned, I played with a lot of very interesting people. And I remember my son-in-law, who's not here tonight, saying to me one day, you know, it seemed unusual. I walked in the house and went out on the side porch and you were sitting there and there's Don Chula and Bob Gracie sitting there drinking beer with you on the porch. So it has been very enjoyable. I most, of all, most of my golf is behind me now, but I enjoy more than anything watching kids and grandkids play. And I want to thank the committee for this honor. 
traditions here at Quail Ridge. And we're pleased that you were here to help us celebrate this evening. Please enjoy the rest of your evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've been asked by the food and beverage staff to just stay, stay placed for just a couple of minutes while they uh, remove these doors at the side here, and then we'll enjoy uh, food and drink. So thank you very much again. Okay. 